Welcome to the Monday, April 19th, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Eric Gilbertson. Liz Pritchett. Martha Smirsky. Benjamin Cheney. And Steve Everett, committee members. And Meredith Crandall, staff. Tammy Burry, recording secretary. And Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures and process? I will. Uh, just a quick question, Steve. Were you giving John the meeting ID or was it somebody else I should be expecting to join? It was just John. He okay. needed the, he needed the uh, meeting ID. Okay. Nope. Great. Just trying to see if we were going to have another member of the public pop up shortly. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. This is mostly for people at home watching via Orca. So that people can log in if they need to. Um, so for those of you viewing this meeting via Orca Media, if you want to participate in the discussion, you can use this link to join the Zoom meeting. Um, or if you want, you can call into this number use the meeting ID, um, and that will let you participate via telephone. Um, if anybody has problems accessing the meeting, please email me this email address. Um, and also, if you're having difficulties while you're in the Zoom meeting, you can message me using the chat function in Zoom. Um, and that will um, that chat, I want to keep that restricted to technical issues, but it will be included in the public record if it gets used. Um, the Zoom meeting is being recorded um, and turning on your video is optional. Public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. For anyone participating by phone, um, if, if somebody participates by phone, I'll give them the, the information they need about that. Um, do, 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 do. If anybody, if any member of the public comes on, I'll, I'll brief people on that. Um, if somebody does call in, please, when you get on, um, wait until the chair recognizes you and make sure you announce your full name and address and what, what topic you want to speak on, and then we'll go from there. In the event that the public is unable to access this meeting, then I get emails about that, get notified, then we'll need to continue the meeting to a time and place certain. Um, if anyone is having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications that are open on your phone and computer. Um, anybody at home who needs it, or if anybody is having problems with the file share, all of the meeting materials are available via this link. You just have to go to the current and upcoming events box and then download um, the files for this particular meeting. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done via roll call vote. I will now pass this meeting back over to the chair. Okay, unless anybody has anything to add at this time, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda for the two applications? This is Martha. I move to approve the agenda. I'll second, that's Liz. All in favor of the agenda, please speak your names. Martha. Liz. And. And Steve. So we can go to the first application for 66 Main Street, the proposal for a seasonal outdoor seating. And I believe Jesse's there to describe the application. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Steve. I just, I needed to unmute myself there. I, I am zooming on my phone. So if you see me doing this on my screen, it's just because I can't see everybody's faces all at the same time. So pardon me for that. I, though I do, I do see that Ben, 
I think has kind of the best digs going on here with the with the outdoor situation there. Um, I want to thank you all for hearing my application on behalf of Charlio's. Um, quite frankly, I had hoped that I was going to be here uh, in front of you all again with a very uh, different and more permanent application for uh, a long-term outdoor activation of uh, our space next to Charlio's. Um, but this past year has proven more difficult than we had originally thought it was going to be um, as far as being closed down originally in spring, limited seating in the summertime. And thank you uh, all for allowing uh, us to activate this last season. Um, and then with losing the end of the year as well and into this spring, it's it's just put me in a place uh, where I'm not able to invest into a more permanent activation there, but do hope to. So I am here with uh, the same application that uh, I brought forth last year, um, and that is uh, similar similar screening uh, as last year, um, same amount of tables and chairs with uh, umbrellas, um, my Ivy ad that you uh, all had recommended, and quite honestly, I found to be handsome, but also hilarious. Um, and I hope, I hope that, I hope that this was, uh, to all of you and to most of Montpelier, a really nice ad to, uh, downtown in the summer months. And I'm hoping that, uh, you all feel like as far as activating it again with the same aesthetic, uh, and again, with the hope that, well, at this point next year, we'll be able to do something a little bit more permanent. Or if things go well, maybe uh, I can come to you later in the season with uh, some updates as we, you know, put a little coin in our pocket. So I I am here at, uh, at your mercy and hoping for uh, approval, but also open to recommendations. <clears throat> Jesse, this is Martha. I think we discussed this last year, but you have in here a a picture of an arbor, an, an ironworks arbor that came, yeah. I think, from the black door. Um, what is the use of that? I think you might have told us last year, but I forgot. Sure, we uh, we had we had installed that last year, and we we kind of we had used that as an as an entry uh, waypoint into. Uh, the what we call the veranda and so just beyond the veranda on our property we have um we have a, a a bartender there who is checking ids to make sure that everybody who comes into the space is uh, legally allowed to be there okay so this was moved down into your outdoor space then it yeah it, oh. it was we had moved it down there uh last year okay and then I have just one other question. There's pictures in here of Langdon Street, and I'm not sure where they come into your application. Um, and that is that is a great question. Let me quickly just re-engage what I've sent along to you here. Um, Jesse, why don't I pull it up on the screen? Okay. I help, would that help you? Or sure. oh, it was. It was you know at what? The back I, of the application packet. I know, I know, I know the answer now, and uh, uh, the answer is there are pictures of Langdon Street there because last year we were hoping to have approval to install Ben Cheney's uh, gates at the front of the lot, and so that was a that was a pictures of those gates installed on Langdon Street for Langdon Street Alive. We have we have since uh, installed one of those in the lot, and it it's very big and cumbersome, and we have not moved it since we laid it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the w the way that we had used that uh, last year, other than the fact that we wanted to give 
uh, Ben and his genius a little bit of shine there on Main Street was to um, use it as uprights for um, lighting across the lot because it was it was very tall and it actually served as a, a great pillar to basically hang lighting along. Okay. And then there's a person sitting in front of one of those. Is that the same reason? Same reason. Those are those are there only only to show that um, they are public art and they are also useful public art. Okay. Do any of the other committee members have any questions, comments, or suggestions? This, this is Eric. I, I support the use of uh, Ben's sculptures uh, there in, uh, you know, whatever way you see the best. I think making that a lot interesting in downtown is a good thing. Thanks, Eric. And they're obviously movable. Because you moved one. <laughs> that, yeah, I I wouldn't say say that they're super easy to move, but they can be moved. <laughs> they're engineered to stay put if a large truck drives into them, so they don't fall on anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Movable only in the sense they're not permanently attached. <laughs> Right, Te technically not, not permanently attached. Just, just sitting there with gravity, a lot of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always said that temporary is anything short of forever. <laughs> <laughs> but they were. I mean, I guess I should say this. They, when we did put them at Langdon Street, they were. Uh, we did have to have them engineered so that when and if somebody were to climb to the very top of it, they weren't able to tip it over. So it is, um, it, it did go through engineering with uh, DeWolf in an effort to make sure that it was not something that uh, was a hazard to the public. Put 200 pounds up at the top, it wouldn't fall over. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Okay, unless somebody has any other questions or comments, I can read through the criteria that apply to the project. For all projects, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings are consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That would be acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located. That would be acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view. That's acceptable. And then outdoor lighting fixtures, Structural design of any outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. That's acceptable. And lastly, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements? And C, mechanical equipment screening. All of those are acceptable at this location. All in favor of the application as presented, speak your names. This is Martha, I'm a yes. Eric, yes. Liz, yes. I'm going to abstain. Okay, and Steve says yes. So it is approved. That's... Meredith, do you want to comment on the next step for Jesse? Yeah, 
Uh, so Jesse, we will get that um, permit out to you as soon as possible. It's going to be basically the same conditions about removal time as last year. Mm -hmm. um, and we're a little backlogged right now, but this should go pretty quick. Um, but I'll, we'll get that out as soon as possible because I know you're going to want to set up as soon as you can. Uh, yeah, I would like to. We have been, we have had unusually nice early weather this yeah. year. Yep. Yeah. I would really, I would like to, I want to thank you. Thank you all so much for the input and for allowing us to do this again. And, and uh, I, oh, no, what ahead. was that, Steve? I was going to say thank you for coming before the committee and good luck with your project and hope you're wildly successful again. Oh, thank you. I'm going to knock on wood for that. Uh, and before before I leave here, I, I just want would also like to say, though, none of you have asked me yet, and it probably is not my time to speak, but I am a neighbor uh, of John Mayfield's project, and I, I would like to say that I support it. Well, thank you very much for your support. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, thanks, Sean. Thank you, thank you all. I hope I hope that uh, you are not on the Zoom for too much longer because it's really nice out. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Take care, everyone. Okay, the next application is for Fifty Four State Street, and the applicant for Julio's is John Mayfield. And I will ask for people's input and I will read through the criteria, but I will recuse myself from voting since we have an interest in the property. And I will ask John Mayfield to describe his project for the committee. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all very much for um, allowing me to come before you again. Um, as you all know, it's still an interesting time in the in the restaurant business. Um, and our goal with our project is to create an expanded outdoor service area for Julio's, uh, approximately seven foot by 22 foot at patio grade running in the parking lot right next to um, uh, Julio's uh, running north to south adjacent to 54 State Street. It's a temporary seasonal request as like with Jesse, we would uh, love to build something that was seasonally permanent out there, but there are issues with the parking lot um, that uh, prevent us from requesting that. So it is definitely a temporary seasonal request for the summer of 2021 to expand outdoor seating uh, during what we hope is the end of this pandemic, uh, which will help us rebuild customer confidence in dining out. Uh, we hope to be able to use it in future years, but understand this is a temporary one-year application. The area will support three additional tables of four people uh, and is currently within the Everett four foot right of way and another 10 foot right of way um, that exists on the side of the building there. Um, it is the Heaney lot, so Tim will need to sign off on the project. Um, and I have had some conversations with him. He would like to get a document uh, put together uh, regarding that this is temporary and does not in any way permanently impact any rights of way that might uh, go along with that property. Um, if Meredith, could you put up the pictures of what, what we have or? Did that take? Yeah, yeah it's okay. good for me. Usually, usually there's a little green box around what I'm sharing and then every once in a while it just doesn't happen. So this is the diagram and let me know, John, if you want me to scroll to something different. Sure, I will. Um, so you can see we did meet on site. Um, it's probably a question, why are you going out into the parking lot? Why not just do a regular parklet? Um, and we would love to, except that there's no parking space in front of Julio's. Uh, the parking space that we used last year that you folks were, that the city was gracious enough to allow us to use is now being used by Oaks and Evelyn. Um, which makes a lot of sense since they're there and, and doing well, I think. Um, we met on site. I met with Tom McArdle and with Corey Line uh, on site, and they had some ideas on how to do this. Uh, there was a question of, we're only going back, basically, if you were thinking about the side of Julio's, if you want to scroll 
uh, to one of the side views of the building. I've got some pictures in here. I laid out some stanchions so you could see it. Um, and if you'll just go a little bit further, Meredith. So we're coming out seven foot from the concrete base. And if you want to keep going a little bit further. Uh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. It's sideways, unfortunately, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. But, um, oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> you'll see we're only looking to go back to the end of the windows uh, of the wood in the front. We would not be doing any damage to the wood or touching the wood. Uh, it would then be built across in the front. There is an angle from what would be the, uh, I'll say the front side of the windows, the north side of the windows, going back to the existing patio. And that is at roughly a 45 degree angle. And it's done that way um, so that there are no issues. That was something that Tom McArdle and Corey suggested because of line of sight for folks. Uh, there were some questions about, it, will it impact deliveries? It should not. Most of the car, trucks uh, park, they believe that there's still plenty of room for tractor trailers and for two box trucks going down. We're basically going back as far as that first parking sign there. And all the delivery trucks park back in that area and don't come up past it. Um, we would put a no with the city's approval, the, the no parking sign that's there is just in a sleeve. We would mount that to the outside of the uh, railing so that folks know that they couldn't pull up next to that and park for deliveries. Um, we plan to use uh, pressure treated deck board. Uh, if it was, again, if this was a multi-year project, we might look at doing something else. Lattice work on the bottom, six by sixes. For the railing in the front, Right now, if you look at Julio's, that metal railing in the front right there, there is, right there would be great, Meredith, thank okay. you. Yep. The metal railing that's in front of Julio's has a piece that runs um, north to south right there, yes. That would be spun out at approximately, it's just about long enough. We'd have to do a little bit of extension with a little bit of metal, but that would be at the angle and that would be our front um, railing. Then for the back, for the rear, we have a piece of that railing left over from some renovations that we're doing inside. And forgive my drawing, I really am horrible at it. Um, but you can see right there, we would have that railing in the front. There would be lattice on the bottom and wood. The six by six posts we plan on bringing up to a height of about seven foot, possibly eight foot uh, above the top of the um, deck so that, um, and we'll put, we'll, we will put a piece of five quarter across the top of that, something that fits across, or there may be lights on top of that, uh, solar powered lights. We haven't decided which way to go yet, or it could be used possibly for some type of um, uh, very, uh, we're using um, uh, umbrella out there. We have a big 15 foot umbrella, which should provide coverage. So really the plan is to have that there more for a detailed look and to probably put at least two um, solar lights there. On the rear, we would also be using the same type of railing. That would be squared off and not at an angle like that. Let's see, yes, in the rear. Again, forgive my sense of scale and my ability to draw. Um, it was not something I was gifted with. Um, and then on the other side, on the parking lot side, if we can go down a little bit further, we are we have bought some black metal railing, um, and we will be putting a piece of five quarter across the top of that. All this railing has um, the four inch uh, requirements, so nobody can, no little kids can hurt themselves there. And we'll be at a height on this side of, I believe it's 42 inches. Um, there will be a little space at top and bottom. Um, and the railing itself is 32. So we'll have a five inch space at the top and then a five inch space at the bottom and then a railing across the top that's going across. I think it's drawn in there or at least on one of the drawings it is. And with that, I'll ask if anyone, that's the railing that we'll be using. and the front and the rear, and then we purchase some metal railing for the side.
what that will ask if there's any. Oh, and the furnishings going on, if you want to go a little lower, that's the lattice work. Those are the chairs that will be outside. They're uh, silver aluminum, and it's, um, I'll call it faux wood. Uh, it's basically some type of an engineered product that looks like teak, but will never turn gray and is not nearly as lovely. Um, and then down below, those are the tables we'll be using. They're 32 by 48, and they'll have two people on each side. These are what we purchased last year for when we had our park lit out in the street. Uh, reflectors there, I want to say they're three and a half feet high. Uh, they will be in the back of the, um, on the rear side or the south side of the deck in the corner, uh, outer corner. And they'll be on the front side where the uh, 45 degree angle meets the main portion of the deck as a reflector so folks can see them. With that, I'll ask if anyone has any questions. No, oh, I was going to ask about reflectors and if you're worried about cars hitting it. Um, sure, that's always a worry, but just like when I had the park out last year, I, I, last year with the park lot outside, I learned something that most people don't know how to park. Um, watching them pull in where they were. It was pretty amazing to see. But, yeah, we've got the reflectors. I don't think – I think with the way it's designed, with the 45-degree angle, the city thought it was okay. It was a question that we discussed. So, sure, it's I'm that, always – It's not It's not really within <laughs> design reviews. So if the city is okay with it. I think it looks like a good design. I hope Thank you. It helps out this summer. Thank you very much. I did have some support in my initial design. We we have a relationship with someone who knows something about design, uh, who is excusing himself right now. So he did give us a little input uh, <laughs> uh, on what would make it better from my original thoughts, and he was right. If, if no other committee members have any comments or questions at this point, what I can do is because I will not be able to vote for the project. Uh, I am abstaining, but I will read through the criteria and then Eric will comment on acceptable or unacceptable or not applicable. So the criteria that apply to the project Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, character defining features, finishes and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Um, it, this one doesn't have anything to do with deterioration and then see any treatment that causes damage to historic materials, including, but not limited to physical treatments, uh, are again, don't apply here. So Eric, would you call that acceptable or otherwise? That's, uh, that's uh, acceptable. Uh, yeah, I, I have one quick question that you're going to remove this during the winter, right? Oh yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, we'll be we'll be following the same guidelines as um as the parklets. So for this year, good. Although I probably won't get it done as fast as some of the parklets are going to go up. So, yeah. Criteria number two: existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size scale architectural features detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Eric? I would say that's not applicable. Okay. Number three, proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and the site on which the project's located. And I actually staff found that not applicable. Number four, 
location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. That's acceptable. It doesn't really screen. I uh, went between not applicable and acceptable. It's a weird. It's a weird clause in here. Um, you know, because it's it's the location of the fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact, basically. Um, and since there's fencing involved, I had to keep it in here. And then lastly, landscaping screening and screening and site furnishings. Projects within the design review overlay district and subject to landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. I would and say for, that, that, that's for, acceptable. Uh, and, and again, for historic structures, similarly, existing historic and contributing resources such as street trees, fences, Gates, walls, steps, gazebo, walkways, front and side yard patterns shall be retained or restored when impacted in any alteration. And then again, walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and the building and scale traditional materials and design the reflective period. Incompatible. It's still acceptable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all the criteria that applied to the parklet and I'll call for the vote. Okay. So all in favor, please say your name. This is Martha. Eric. Say yes. Liz, yes. Eric, yes. And Steve, you're abstaining. I'm abstaining. Did Ben vote? Not oh, yet. Yes, I did. I say oh, okay. yes. I'm I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, so, that's because it didn't go through. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so the uh, the vote is all in favor. So it has passed. Thank you all so, very, very much. Thank you, John. Good luck and, with it. Thank you. Mer Thank you. Mer I'm sorry, Meredith, you want to advise John what the next step is? Um, yeah, John and I talked earlier today. We can't actually issue the permit until we get the final sign off from um, Tim Heaney for the Heaney Trust because they're one of the property owners that this is going to be on, um, our owners of property. So, you know, we'll get Steve's recommend or the recommendation form from Eric slash Steve. Um, and we'll be working on the administrative site plan report that you'll get from us. But if you can get whatever you need from Tim, um, then we'll be able to actually issue the permit. So we'll we'll do what we need to do on this end while you're working on that. But I will. I've talked. I talked with Tim today, and um, uh, we discussed some next steps. So hopefully, it'll get addressed pretty quickly. Awesome. Meredith and Steve, do you want me to come down and sign the form to? I can do that. Uh, either at Steve's office or yeah. whatever, wh whatever seems appropriate administratively. I think that sounds smart. Um, I'll be here in the office tomorrow morning, um, and I'll be here on Thursday. Okay. Or do you want me to stop by your office, Steve, and sign it? E either that, or I can swing by your place on my way home and then drop it off in the uh, at the Dropbox. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just come down in the morning and sign it and, and bring it, bring it to Meredith or whatever needs to be done. Okay. Great. Again, thank you all very much. You're welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, John. N Next on the agenda is review and approval of the minutes from April the 5th. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or changes to the minutes? 
Yeah, this is Martha. Um, on the first page at the very bottom, we're talking about the Sarducci's project. And the last sentence there says, the impervious surface test came back with a score of 100. I don't think we want the word impervious. That means that it, there is not penetrable. And I think it's exactly the opposite. I'll, I'll look back at what was said. Um, Cause maybe, maybe the, they actually said that when they meant the opposite. Um, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah. I do remember Carol saying that the score was a hundred, but, um, but it was very good. Mean, that means it's a hundred percent impervious. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> That's, very bad. That's exactly what we don't want. <laughs> Well, actually, the engineer's drawings showed that it it was perfectly acceptable because of the different layers built into the design. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. but it, it's one of those things where if, if they actually said impervious test. It should say not impervious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll fix that as, as it makes sense. Because um, sometimes even if what they say in the meeting minutes, you know, if what they said in the meeting isn't quite what they meant, sometimes it's hard to tweak it from the minutes versus just clarifying in the actual permit that's issued. Thank other you for than, careful other than that, I think they're fine. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes with that change? I move to approve the minutes with that change. All second. All in favor of the minutes with that change, speak your names. I, I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Martha, yes. I wasn't there either. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So we have enough to approve. Does anyone in the committee have, or Meredith have any other business? Um, M M Meredith, I'm assuming the city council approved our grant. Yes, so the city council approved the grant agreement for the um, certified local government grant for the design review, um, sorry, guidelines, brain short circuiting. Um, the city manager was out all last week, so he hasn't been able to sign it. Once I get that signed version, I'll be sending it to the state. And once we've got it fully approved from the state, we'll be getting a RFP out for bids on consultants or proposals from consultants to do that work. Um, so we will keep you all updated. Hopefully at the very soon, um, HPC will be meeting to review responses to those RFPs and we'll get going on, on working on those guidelines. Now, I, I can't remember the budget, but did uh, you put in any time, donated time, or can we add it for the design review? Uh, I bet we could throw in, I, I hadn't included that in there as part of the budget, but I bet we could. Yeah, well, that would be good. Yeah, I bet we can, because um, yeah. they'd be considered experts as well in their field. I hadn't thought of that. None of us had thought about it when I was doing the grant proposal. The, the <laughs> I, I, I just thought about it because we're in front of design review, so. Yep, no, once we've got the agreement signed, we'll count time from DRC members and HPC members. I think we can do both. Because, because, so, so, cer certainly one of my goals is to make these as useful to design review as possible. Yep. For sure. That's all I have. Ben, I've got to ask where you are. I'm on my back deck at my house. Oh, I don't know where you live, but that's really neat. If no one has anything else to add at this point, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move, Eric. That's great, Ben. Did you see the river, Eric? 
I can see the river from where I'm sitting, which is really nice. Yeah. Where, where are you? What street? North Franklin Street. Wow. That's, that's, yeah, that's cool. This, the piece of property that I'm on here, I found on Craigslist many years ago, and it described itself as bordering North Street and the North Branch of the Winooski River. And I said, that doesn't exist. But if it does exist, it's a really amazing piece of property. And it is an amazing piece of property. Yeah. Cool. So do I hear a second for adjournment? Um, this is Martha. I'll second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha, Eric. yes. Eric, yes. Liz, yes. Ben, yes. And Steve, yes. So meeting is adjourned. All have a nice evening. Thanks. Thank you.